It's the end of the week, our cosy Plan With Me chat. I am answering your questions. I've got news shh, of a three-day challenge that we're doing next week. Book talk, hygge talk, and as usual, your choice of four self-care missions. Ready for that? Let's dive in. Diana Demerick here, rah, rah, rah. We made it to the end of another week and I love these, these Friday check-ins with you. If we haven't met before, I am a routines coach, hygge expert, fly lady, mentor. What, what I'm helping you with this year is to simplify and to thrive. So let's dive straight into, as I, as I said, we've got questions. Let's go through the questions first. I've got a little challenge for you next week. I'll be checking with you next week for that. And we're not on the clock today. We're, we're, we're not working with the timer, but maybe while we chat today, you want to dust something in your office, fold some laundry, do the dishes. And I'll just give you a wee heads up. We're, we're, we were working in Fly Lady Zone for this week. You saw me decluttering in my closet, in the wardrobe. And next week, next week Fly Lady Zone is Fly Lady Zone 5, which is the living room, the den, family room, wh whatever you want to call it. So let me just get my reading glasses on. Deborah, Northeast USA. Hi, Deborah. Diane, you always look like you're wearing short sleeves and lightweight fabrics. Living in a cold climate, how do you do it? I live in the Northeast USA and I'm always in turtlenecks and sweatshirts or sweaters. Great question, Deborah. You will often see me when I'm filming, as Deborah says, in something quite lightweight, but I layer a lot. So when I am um, off camera, then I'll usually add a jacket, a blazer. When I'm coaching online, I've usually got a blazer on. Maybe I'll add a turtleneck sweater, a thick sweater. So I kind of layer up and down. And I'm also postmenopausal, so I quite often get the hot flashes. So I really like the layering process. And also with layering, it means that I can wear all of my clothes basically all year round, layering them up or down. When it's really, really cold, for example, I'll wear this blazer with um, with a t-shirt and also with a sweater underneath. So anyway, that, that's that's how I do it. Next question. Suzanne Hag. Uh, I am absolutely frozen with decluttering. Oh, okay. Don't worry, Suzanne. I've got, I've got ideas for you. The place is my sewing and hobby room. I cannot even go in it. Any ideas to help me out of this? Completely overwhelmed. Suzanne, I want you to take a deep breath, in and out. It's all gonna, it's all gonna be okay. Okay. So first up, you've got, you've got to be watching my videos, okay? Because I walk you through the process ten minutes at a time. And as I've said before, if you've got an, an eye, a room, an area which just puts the, paralyzes you with fear, what I always suggest is that you you set your timer for ten minutes. You go into that room and you grab as much as you can hold or one box, one bag worth of stuff, and you take it to another area in your house where you feel calm and in control, okay? We don't want you working in that area where you're already feeling paralyzed. You take it somewhere else, maybe you've got candles lit, maybe you've got some nice music going, something that's just gonna help put you into that, that feeling of being back in control that's a positive thing. Watch one of my videos. When you do, you'll hear me talking you through the process. And I want you to know that the, the decluttering process, the organizing process, we don't have to finish it. And by, by that, I mean, you don't have to finish the whole thing. I just want you to see it as you're working on it. You're improving things. 10 minutes at a time. And that could be taking one box and going through the things. And, and the idea of taking it out of that place and doing it somewhere else also helps you to release the things because once you've actually got it out that room, it's more harder to go back and put it in there again. If you're working in the area, you might pick things up and say, oh, I don't know what to do with this. And then you just plonk it down somewhere else. We want you out of that area. And then when you're away from that area, you can say, okay, do I really want to put that back in there? Do I really love it, need it? Where's it going to go, okay? So little tip for, for those of you who have got a difficult area 
you you don't work in that area you work somewhere else in your home that is more calming to you okay and I could go on and on and on about declutter but I've got loads of playlists loads of help with that but great question Suzanne Ho hope I helped you with that today okay the next one is from Nicola in Sydney Australia hi down under uh, and she's had a question about the winter swimming championships video that I put out she she didn't realize there were male swimmers in her group and she's referring I think she's referring to Tim and there's a, a at the end of the video you see us swimming a relay and the there were three ladies and one gent and that's Tim now Tim is Canadian and in the relays at these events you've got to be a mixed relay so men women and a mixture of both and I know Tim we were both members of a swimming club here in uh, Copenhagen and I met first met Tim at the ice swimming world championships last year in France anyway Tim is Canadian really sweet guy and he was at the championships with his wife Beverly and with he's got three they've got three adorable kids and they were so well behaved I don't know if it's because they're Canadian or because it's Tim's family uh, but Tim had the little uh, baby and the little carrier thing he was walking around with the baby and then they've got two toddlers so Tim was um, the fourth member of our relay team next question which is from Simona in uh, Germany hi Diane how is your fasting going are you still doing it will you continue further or forever greetings from Germany in Simona okay so the fasting is going really well and it was funny because quite a few people asked me when I was away at the uh, Winter Swimming World Championships I, I don't generally eat until uh, lunchtime I'm doing the fasting thing uh, which works and, and, and I'm not doing fasting to lose weight I'm doing fasting because it just makes me feel better I've, I've kind of shifted some postmenopausal symptoms that I had you know I was feeling bloated and I've also managed to shift that sugar highs and lows I used to get that a lot uh, kind of all my life where I was constantly looking for, for the next thing to eat and having to eat all the time and I've noticed with the fasting that that has gone I haven't been on that oh I'm craving something sweet or craving um, uh, kind of white bread that that kind of thing so the fasting's going really well my usual fasting plan is kind of five days a week I'm fasting for about 15 16 hours sometimes I go a bit longer than that and, and that's just because maybe I'm working and actually forget about it. I'm not even hungry and then one day of the week I do completely normal that's usually Saturday because I'm going to blue tits and then we've always got the, the good spread of breakfast afterwards and then just kind of eat anything that day but I am making sure to get lots of protein uh, and and not skip I'm, I'm not skipping food as it is I'm still eating three good meals a day I'm actually eating better because I'm more conscious of what I'm eating but I'm just eating at a smaller window so yeah the fasting is working really well and even when, when we're at the winter swimming some people said oh but don't you need to eat before the race and actually no <laughs> and the other thing is I was so petrified terrified, ter terrified before every race it's part of the you know the ups and downs of it you know you're, you're in a real I, I'm really scared and then you know when I'm in the moment and doing the race it's fantastic and fabulous afterwards but I'm actually so scared that my throat is completely dry and I realized after a couple of days races that I didn't actually need more to drink it, it wouldn't matter how much I drank it was just I had a dry completely dry throat and mouth so anyway it was all it was all good fun but yes Simone fasting really enjoying it right next one um, June who says okay this wasn't a question uh, but this was a comment on when we we're working in uh, our wardrobes at the beginning of the week uh, she says it does not look like a minimalist wardrobe that was it that's all June said and uh, that that comment made me laugh because quite often I'll get comments of people saying oh you're not minimalist or I, I want you to think about this here why what, what for you is minimalism because I can tell you what it is for me minimalism for me is really 
only keeping the things that I absolutely need and love. Okay, I'm, I'm not one, I'm not in the, are you the minimalist or you think that minimalism is kind of like a religion where you only have one plate and cup and saucer and you're not allowed to have more than uh, a minimalist wardrobe is black and beige and white. Uh, that, that's just a big yawn to me. What, what is your idea of minimalism? Because I think quite often some people get the wrong end of the stick or maybe think that they want to do minimalism and lose sight of what it can actually give you because what minimalism has given me, and I hope you see that in my videos because I see a lot of minimalist videos and their lives look, let's say, quite drab and there's no kind of joy in their lives. What it's given me is more time to do the things that I love and also to do things that I never thought I had time to do and most of all, time with friends. I, I heard a really good snippet of a soundbite of something the other day. Somebody was saying, the greatest gift that you can give to each other is time, time with each other. And I thought, wow, that's, that was really big for me because that is what minimalism has given me. Pairing that, you know, the fly lady system helped me get the house under control, Minimalism was the next level of really decluttering right back to, I enjoy decluttering now. I enjoy, before it was, oh, you know, I didn't want to let go of things. And now I see that I have so much more, a richer life because of the minimalism. So anyway, food, food for thought. See, see what, what, what does minimalism mean to you? And that's why I always say, I'm a cozy minimalist. You, you see color, you see joy in my life. Um, um, but it, it's not about the, the things, it, it's the connection with others. It's really just in, enjoying everything that life has to offer. Not being kept back by the stuff. Right, this one is from uh, Angeline, I think her name is. Uh, she's probably Dutch, um, Belgian. Okay, so you look great, Diane. Glad you're back. Thank you. Okay, maybe you can answer a question on Friday about the fly lady system. Always my pleasure. Do you clean or declutter 10 minutes every day? If not, how do you keep your house tidy and clean? 10 minutes a week cannot be enough or... Okay, here we go, and, and uh, I know many of you have heard this before. In, instead of thinking, looking at the fly lady system, I, I, and I know many of you linear thinkers look at the fly lady system and you think that it's kind of that all or nothing. You're looking for something that will help you, and then when you start reading what you think are the rules, you think, Oh, but that's not, that's not enough. And I want to give you that little anecdote about a coaching client that I had many years ago. And I can't remember the, the exact details of it, but we were talking about the weekly upkeep clean. So, so in Fly Lady System, you've got your weekly upkeep clean, which is just 10 minutes on each of seven tasks. And that's just not the whole house, just the areas that you use the most, the ones that you're using on a daily basis. And it keeps the home ticking along. So you've got that. And then added to that, I, at the beginning of the week, add in a 10 minute detailed clean or declutter in the zone. Okay, so that's what we've been, that's what I've been showing you in the videos. From January, we've done two full rounds of all fly, fly lady zones. I've decluttered on a Monday, cleaned with you on a Wednesday to show you how the system fits together. And this lady, we were talking about the weekly upkeep clean and she came with, with the usual argument of, oh, but no, she, she hadn't done the 10 minutes of, I can't remember if it was mopping or vacuuming because that wouldn't be enough. And I said, okay, okay. So what, 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 you know, how much time do you need? And she was like, mm, I could hear, yeah. And then I, I, I dig a bit deeper and say, well, how often do you, uh, I think it was vacuuming. Yeah, vacuuming. And then it turned out she hadn't vacuumed for six months. And I said, well, okay, maybe you have to see it from the perspective of vacuuming for 10 minutes. You can really get a lot done when you vacuum for 10 minutes. That is a hundred times better than not vacuuming at all for six months. She was, she was thinking of it, it had to be perfect. She had to 
vacuum the whole place but having that perfectionist block may mean that she didn't even pull out the, the, the vacuum because she thought, I don't have time to do it. And you know what? Whenever you hear yourself saying that, I don't have time to do it, it means I don't have time to do the whole thing. I don't have time to do the whole thing perfectly. You, you got to drop that thinking. So uh, Angeline, uh, definitely just do what you can. And if you don't know what to do, j just do what I'm doing. That's what I always say. If you don't know what to do, just do 10 minutes, set your timer. We're not on the timer today. Set the timer for 10 minutes and do something, okay? So don't, don't stress about you're only doing five minutes or you're doing 15 minutes, just do something. Let me give you a quick update on books and then I can tell you about next week's woohoo challenge. And I hope you're enjoying my videos. The, the best way that you can help me, if you could help me, I would really like to get to 100,000 subscribers this year. <gasps> Let, let's, let's see if I can achieve that. I don't do any sponsored content. I don't put annoying ads that pop up in the middle of my videos. But if you could like, subscribe, even just leave a comment with an emoji, and particularly if you can share my videos in a decluttering group, in an organizing group, housekeeping group, Hygge group, dressing your truth group, that, that would really help me. Okay, thank you. Sh shameless plug over. Okay, so on the book front, I'm still reading this one, Richard Cole's Murder Before Evensong. Really enjoying it. It's a very nice, genteel book. I, I think you would enjoy if you're more into the cozy murder mysteries. An update on the audiobook that I was listening to, Last Scene in Santorini by Vivian Conroy. And I have to say, it started out well and it really went downhill. And actually, by the end of the book, I wanted to, to, to murder the main uh, protagonist, the, the female detective, Atalanta, myself. It just, oh, there was so many, oh, this and oh, that. And so unfortunately, that, that only turned out to be a two out of five. I'm so glad that I get all my books for free from our local Danish library. Uh, I hope nobody nobody bought that one, or maybe you enjoyed it. You know, we're we're all different. The one that I am reading uh, on audiobook at the moment, listening to the Kamogawa Food Detectives by His Hisashi Kashiwai, and I'm enjoying that. It's uh, it's very different. It's about food, Japanese culture. Really enjoying that. So th those are those are the two that I'm reading at the moment, reading and listening. And for those of you who think. Listening to book is not as good as reading. I want you to get that thinking right out of your heads as well. It's all reading. It's all being taken somewhere else. It's all good self-care. Because I know there are quite a few book snobs that, oh, you can't, you know, an audio book doesn't count. It absolutely counts. Right, news of next week. What are we doing next week? Woohoo! We've got a, a small challenge. I'm doing a three-day challenge with you next week. And I'm, I think I'm going to call it Time to Shine. We're moving into spring here. I know in the Southern Hemisphere, you're moving into autumn. And it's time for a little quick refresh of our routines. You know me, I love a good routine. And, and next week, I'm going to check in with you. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we're going to do a very brief boom boom with our routines, okay? What I'm expecting from you, this is what I'm, I'm going to be doing, because I, I think the, these are the two pivotal things for me, is making sure that we are dressed for the day. And that can be many things. Maybe you are dressed for going to work. Maybe you are dressed for going out into the garden. Maybe you are dressed for doing a painting project at home. So we're going to be getting dressed every day. And the other thing that we can be working on is shining our sinks at the end of the day. And for me, that's that's tying up <laughs> the, the end of my day with a little bow, putting something nice beside the sink. They, these are some beautiful freesias that I got from Sue last week. And they're still going strong after a full week. I love freesias. It reminds me actually, uh, our, our wedding anniversary is coming up. We got married on Easter Saturday and I actually had freesias in my bridal bouquet, bridal flower. So Love, love freesias. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. You're going to check in with me three days in a row. And we're going to get consistent on our routines. And some other news that is coming up. For those of you who are following the Dressing Your Truth program, if you're a member of the Lifestyle Group, you'll know that Carol, Carol Tuttle, she's doing Style School 
starting 1st of April and I I am the bonus special guest this year and on the Wednesday the 3rd of April if you're in the lifestyle group this is for you I am doing a one hour session with Carol it will be at 10 a.m mountain time which is 6 p.m Copenhagen time 5 o'clock UK time and uh, Carol and I will be helping you to declutter your closet the DYT way according to your type. So if, if you're a member of, of DYT Lifestyle Group, I shall see you for that. I'm really looking for It's always fun working with Carol. Right, and let's keep moving and get on with the self-care. I, uh, I hope you had something to drink and you've been tidying your office and uh, doing the dishes or doing laundry while, while we chat. But I wanted to be a bit chatty today. I hope that's all right. Okay, so four self-care ideas. You can choose whichever you want. Let me know down below if it is one, two, three, or four. Okay, first mission is to decorate your home with something seasonal. We've done that before. It's a really good time to do it again. We are coming up for Easter. Bring the outside inside. That, that's what we do in Denmark. We always kind of bring some spring flowers inside. A little update on my Cress project. You know, I had this little ceramic egg and I'm using the bottom part. This is just for display. I sowed the Cress seeds and look at that. They're really sprouting now. So those are going to be ready for our Easter table. Though the only problem with growing Cress is it's got quite a weird kind of metallic meaty smell. De decorate uh, something a bit seasonal. Second mission, should you choose to accept it, is to put a few uh, spring or autumn outfits together. Maybe you found something when we were decluttering our closets this week. Maybe you found some jewellery that you haven't worn for a long time, an heirloom necklace. Let, let's actually use those things, okay? So come up with some new outfits. Number three is to be nice to yourself because I think all too often, we're always comparing ourselves to others or thinking, oh, I should be doing that and everybody else is doing this and you see everything on social media. I want you to be nice to yourself. Say some positive affirmations. I think you're fabulous. There you go. Just even sit down for 10 minutes and give yourself a little pat on the back, a little rah, rah, rah. Just remember that you're, you're just supposed to be who you are, okay? Don't be striving to be everybody else or doing what everybody else is doing. You're just fine as you are, okay? So some, some positive self-talk. And number four is to reach out to somebody else. You know, I was talking about the minimalism, what it's given me is just that focus on what, what is important to me. And reach out to somebody else. Maybe you want to send them uh, a Danish uh, Gekkebreu, the secret snowdrop letter. Talk to, I've got a whole video on that. Just send a text to a friend that you haven't seen for a while. And, and often when I do these things, I, I don't ask a question. So you're, you're not requiring the other person to respond to you, but just say, oh, hey, I was just thinking about you the other day because I was thinking about whatever. And you, you know, you're just sending a little nice bit of love uh, out, out there. And, and sometimes you, you don't know what that's going to start. You know, it can really cause these, these big ripples and things. So anyway, one, two, three or four, let me know down below what it's going to be. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. And just a wee reminder, please like, subscribe, share the video. That helps me. And I'm going to wrap it up because it is woohoo, weekend is on the horizon. I shall see you next week for our three-day challenge. And all I've got left to say is live long and prosper. May the Danish spring hooker be with you. And I'll see you on Monday with a wrap, wrap, wrap. Okay, bye for now.